So uh, let me bring you on here, Andre, just a second. Are you there? There we go. I am. All right, good. Hi. Andre, Andre. Yes. yes, Gary. So nice to see you. Since we've um, we've corresponded over the years, you you've been around EFT for how many years? Would you say probably twenty? Twenty. Um, yes. All right. At least. Um, and interestingly enough, you have done some really good stuff with it, but. If I'm saying this correctly, it has never worked for you. Did I say it right? Yeah, not with any uh, great success. I mean, I can I can sort of, you know, if I'm if I'm having difficulty with something, I can tap on it and it'll be less, but it's never a zero. Yeah. Okay. And chances are you'll. We're not going to be doing tapping, as you know. We're going to use the unseen right. therapist and so on, but right. it may go down some. But I'm guessing it also shows back up like it was a temporary result would i be right oh, right yes because i've really just uh, you know if i if I, I i have tapped on things that are, are happening in the moment and just on that particular thing not what has brought brought it about yeah okay because i don't know how to do that well and you and i had discussions like this a, a day or two ago Right. Uh, and we're, we're talking about getting to cause and that's likely why you're not getting results but we're going to we're going to kick around all of that here, but I want to spend a little in-depth time with you getting to understand the process first, and then we're going to make an effort at getting a really good start to launching you into this so that you're really going to be able to get your, get your results that have avoided you or evaded you until right. up until now. Um, but let me, let me, let me, let me start off with this. Uh, and you started off years ago when I was, when I was uh, introducing this as EFT tapping, where we would physically tap on the meridians and so on. And that's, that's what most people think of as uh, EFT, but our latest advancement involves the spiritual dimension, right? Which we call non-denominationally mm -hmm. the unseen therapist. Right. So let me ask you, have you read my book, the unseen therapist? It's right here. Yes. <laughs> okay. So you've read it. Yes. So let, let me let me ask you just as, as, as a lean into this. Do you have a spiritual preference or a spiritual leaning of some kind? Uh, I I believe in God. Um, I'm I, I was raised Catholic. I'm still pretty much Catholic, but I'm what you call a cafeteria Catholic. I pick and choose what I like. Yeah. Okay. Well. Many people do that. Okay. Yeah. But let me ask it to you more generally, if I can. All right. With all the issues that you're facing, uh, and there are a number, we're going to go over them in a minute, but there are a number of serious ones. Okay. Of all the issues that you face, if God was sitting right next to you, you know, there in your living room or at your home, mm -hmm. could God fix them in your belief system? Could God I, fix them? Yes, I believe that. Okay. All right. Well, then, then I'm going to ask you a theoretical question. Why hasn't God done so, so far? I don't know. And I'm pretty pissed off about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I was brought up to believe that I can be angry with God because he can take it. Well, yes. Yes. Okay. Well, okay. What we've developed here, as you know, with having my, read my book, The Unseen Therapist, um, is a way to communicate with the spiritual dimension, whether you call it God or Jesus or Buddha right. or Allah or whatever of course. discipline you come from. Well, we're going to actually, we don't use the term very much, but we're going to actually pray in that we're going to create a request mm -hmm. for healing, but done in a very specified manner that we can measure. Okay. And you've been exposed to some of this before, but we're going to do it in ways that that uh, will fit and customize to you. Uh, okay. Now, so I want to get a list, first of all, of some of the issues involved. Uh, 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 among other things, you were telling me previously that you have a a fair amount of ongoing anxiety. Would I be correct? Yes. Uh, I've, I, it's been since I was... Uh, probably 15, um, uh, anxiety, 
panic disorder um, and varying degrees of agoraphobia. I was never completely housebound, but often I was close. And okay. so it never really got to that point. And so I'm grateful for that. Well, okay. So started at age 15. <clears throat> Do I presume correctly that from zero to 15, you weren't anxiety Burden. No, I mean, I wasn't. I was. I mean, I, I I remember having sort of little anxious episodes when I was a child, but nothing really until my first major panic attack when I was fifteen. Okay, I want to get to that in a bit. Okay, no. now the agoraphobia also starts around age fifteen. No, that was years later. Um, I had to learn that, so I had like I had to practice a lot to get that. Well. Your video just cut off. Yeah. Let me ask the question again. Your, agor your agoraphobia started at age 15? No, it didn't. I had to uh, I, I had to get really good at panic disorder um, and, and, and isolating myself and closing my uh, safe zone in order to get to the real, really powerful agoraphobia. So it took a lot of work, but I got there almost completely. Okay. Um, I'm being facetious obviously it's yeah. not something that i wanted or i was seeking out it just happened yes all right if i have it right and i, and I may not have this as, as accurate as i so correct me okay but this anxiety has caused you to abuse alcohol of course other drugs as well uh like, like prescription like ativan i've never been one for like it's just street drugs or anything. Oh, like that. Okay. But alcohol, yes, to the point, if I remember right, you have recently had a liver transplant because of alcohol damage to your liver. Do I remember that right? That is correct. How long ago was the liver transplant? Just this past December. Oh, okay. So so that would make it about seven or eight months ago. Right. It's December oh, 14th. Right. Yes. Okay, hold on a second. I'm making a note here. And you also have something you've told me in an email. I don't know how to pronounce it. Heat urticaria. Did I say it right? Heat urticaria. Okay. Describe what that is. Uh, when I'm, I, I've never been one that sweats. And so get, sweat gets trapped under the skin and it can't be released. And so as a result, I get sort of a prickling sensation all over my body. And this has only happened, started happening in the past few months. Um, and I've, been prescribed reactin, which is an, an antihistamine. So it's an, it's an, sort of an allergy, but it's not really because it's sort of a, more of a medical condition than it is an allergy, but they're using antihistamines to treat it. And it's with only moderate success. I was outside half an hour ago and I was feeling pretty prickly after about 20 minutes. Right at the moment on a scale of zero to 10, how prickly do you feel? Right now? Yeah. Oh, well, I've got the air is on, so I probably too. One. Okay. But if you if you didn't have the medication? Oh, uh, well, still, if if I because because I have air on the house all the time, so it's always it's always 70 degrees in 68 degrees in the house. So I don't get it indoors. When I go outside, it happens. If you were to go outside right now, would it go from a one or one or two to eight or ten or something? It'll go to about a seven because I am taking the reactant. So um, it's not as bad, but if before the reactant, it would go to like a nine where I would be itching and it would be extremely uncomfortable all over, pretty okay. much all over my upper body. And the, rea the reactant, your, your transplant surgeon said, don't do that? They don't like it because okay. it's hard on the liver and the kidneys, but it's, uh, it's not going to kill me and I'm not going to reject the liver as a result. It's just not their best their, it's not their best route they don't have another option okay but with, without the reactant which is not advised but nonetheless i i get it if you're good if you're into all this discomfort you do it you know but right. but without the reactant uh you wouldn't be a one or two right now oh i probably would because i'm inside i would it, it wasn't it isn't a constant thing it happens when i'm in the heat okay 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 making a little note here huh? And outside in the heat. Okay. All right. And when did that start? 
uh, just about six weeks ago. It just started, and I mean, I've never been crazy about the heat because I said, as I said, I, I'm not, I'm not one who sweats, and so I've never been crazy about high humidity, and uh, but it's never caused discomfort. It's just annoying. It's just been annoying prior to this. Yes. Okay. But starting six weeks ago, it has gradually gotten to the point where it's very annoying. Yes, extremely. I mean, right now, I can feel it now, and it's kind of like a maybe a three now. Okay. I wonder how psychosomatic that is now because we're talking about it. So is it coming because of that? Well, possibly. possibly. Okay. Um, okay, you and I, before this recording the other day, we were talking about possible causes for anxiety and issues and so on. And I was asking you about, did you have an abusive childhood? And you said, as far as you said, yes, as far as your brother was concerned, is it yeah. only, your, only your brother or? Oh, no, just my brother. Just your brother. Yeah. Okay. Your parents were, were they neglectful at all? Were they very loving? Well, how would you describe that? My, my, my father died when I was three in a flying accident. And uh, my mother was uh, a loving, very loving, but she had panic disorder of her own, but she was on pre prescription medication from the day my father died in, in 1967 till she went away for three months in 1980 without explanation and came back a new woman. So we know where she went for 90 days, but I didn't know it at the time. Where does she go? Minnesota. To rehab, I guess. Oh, it, okay. On Quaaludes and Valium. All prescription, right. prescription, prescription drugs. She didn't abuse them. She was just addicted to them. Okay. But while she was pregnant with you, she was given to anxiety? Mm, I don't think so. My father kept her pretty safe. Okay. It was only after your father died that her anxiety showed up. Pretty much. I mean, she was always sort of a nervous driver. And uh, you see, I didn't really know much before my father died because I was three. So I don't yeah. really know much. My sister tells me that um, okay. that she was, you know, a little bit agitated and prone to anger. I mean, outbursts. And she would yell a lot. And she yelled. I mean, my house was very chaotic when I was growing up because she was always yelling. She was very angry because her life had been stolen from her by my father's death she had this great life with him and then it was gone one day what i'm looking for andre is some clue if it's there mm -hmm. um that some of your existing issues started clear back in the womb and there would be some likelihood if your mother was always anxious always nervous didn't want you for example would be one possibility always angry insecure there you as a child would pick it up is an embryo yes. pick it up? And there was, I think, there was more agitation with the pregnancy with me because after my sister was born, who's four years older than I am, so four years had passed before I was born, and my mother was told not to have any children after uh, my sister because they both nearly died, and she wanted one more, and she wanted me, and so she waited, and they, and and she. But she was nervous during the pregnancy. I haven't thought about this actually. She she was nervous. In, she would have been nervous in the pregnancy because she wanted another child and didn't want to lose it. Didn't want to lose me. So there would have been probably considerably more anxiety than with the other pregnancy, which were like my my brother and my second oldest sister. All right, uh, let me. Uh... Those were easy. We'll talk about your brother in a minute, but I want to stay on your mother just for the moment. Sure. And, and what I'm trying to do here is just I'm trying to get a, a useful, broad picture here. I need to get a foundation so we can launch off of that and then get some more specific with you and so on. I'm going to ask you to do a little exercise with me. And it's you may or may not be able to do it. It's okay if you can't do it. I mean, there's no we don't give you any school grade. You don't get an A or a C or anything. Okay. Sure. But just give us a try. Let, let me tell you what I want you to do first, and then you, then do it, and we'll see what happens. Okay. What, I, what what I'd like to have you do in a moment when I say is to, you know, close your eyes, and then imagine. Don't close your eyes now. Just wait. Mm -hmm. But when you do, imagine yourself in the womb as best you can. I know it's past your memory and all that, but just imagine yourself there and tell me 
how that feels. Is it uncomfortable? Comfortable? Do you feel nervous? Safe? I mean, or nothing. I mean, you know, when I do it, I get nothing. Okay. <laughs> Other yeah. people can get something. If you get something, great. Close your eyes. Go back and try it. I can. Yeah, I've never had to do this, but I can see red. Um, and um, I'm blue for some reason. And yeah, um, but nothing. Uh, I feel comfortable, but I, I don't see anything. Like I don't see anything that I should, that, that is remarkable in any way. Okay. That's all right. That's all right. Um, some people, when we do this, they get, well, they get really, really very uncomfortable. And that's a big clue for us. Okay. okay. But some don't, and maybe there's discomfort anyway, and you don't know it. And right. So be it. Okay. So it's just sort of a, a little probe is all that is. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. So, all right, let's get to your brother now for the moment. Your, your brother was very abusive to you primarily sexually. If I, if I remember it right. Uh, yes. Um, well, not primarily. He was, he was emotionally and physically abusive with me, but sexually he was, um, it wasn't anything violent like rape. It was just, he should have known better because he was seven years older than me and I was a child and I, he stole my innocence. And, um, and he was, um, based on things that I've read, he's very, probably very, very likely a psychopath. Um, he tortured small animals and was constantly stealing, was constantly in trouble. And so based on what I've read, and I, I'm not qualified to diagnose anyone, but he fits seven out of the 12. Okay. So he abused you sexually. Now, what's going to be important here mm -hmm. um, isn't the fact of what your brother did or didn't do. That, uh, that's a player in the equation, if you will. Right. But the real important issue is your response to that. That's what's important. We can never change what actually happened that's like trying to change a baseball score in in arrears you can't do it okay yes but your response to it we can change and change elegantly okay okay and it's my guess but tell me if you think i'm off target here it's my guess that emotional issues your re emotional responses to that abuse as well as to other responses to other things other in your in your emotional mm -hmm. life but your responses there have not been resolved. And in current time, they keep replaying subconsciously, perhaps. Okay. But they keep replaying because they're not resolved. Right. They're, part, they're part of your belief system. They're part of, you know, your filters and all of this stuff. Okay. And so if we can go back and find some of these, we call them specific events, a term I think you're familiar with. Yes. Yes. Okay. If we can find these specific events, these are basically causes to a lot of issues mm -hmm. and resolve them. They won't replay anymore. And therefore, the, some of the issues you have, like the anxiety and the heat, euthycaria, and so on, mm -hmm. they, the cause is starting to fade. And therefore, the symptom, which those things are to me, they're symptoms, anxiety heat uticaria and so on uh will start to fade as well mm -hmm. um does that sit well seem on target sure yes i okay. mean if we can i mean if we can find what we're supposed what we're looking for then but i don't know how to get there because when i think of these traumatic events they don't really i mean there are things that i hmm, that i don't talk about um, and I've been told that I have a little bit of PTSD as a result. Um, and I suppose I can talk about it. It's just difficult. Um, hmm. Well, the things that are hard to talk about, are they with your brother and their sexual stuff or something no, else? This is something that I saw. Uh, my mother was from Newfoundland and you, you, I'm sorry, your mother was what? My mother is from Newfoundland and which is from, from new from Newfoundland. Right. Okay. Yes. Yes. Right. 
and uh, she wanted me to know more about more about the, the, the province and, 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 and the people. And so there was a documentary once on the seal hunt, which um, she wanted me to see, and I was nine years old. And, whew, um, Well, wait, let's, I'm going to stop you right there. I don't want to put you through unnecessary emotional turmoil, and okay. we don't have to. Okay. okay? Uh, I want to. I would like to get to a point. See, I, I can see. I don't even know what the details are here no. of this of this event. Okay, I don't know what they are. You do, but I don't. But just just tiptoeing in the door, you're you're in near tears. Okay, I got it. Right. Right. Okay. So that's the kind of thing that happened clear back at age nine. Um, setting aside everything else we've ever talked about, all right, but it, it, clear back at age nine, mm -hmm. um, that is apparently very unresolved. Now, I'd like to deal with that some. I'd like to work with you in a way where we hopefully take the edge off of that so it right. becomes more and more comfortable to talk about. Mm -hmm. And then see if we can just clean it up. Right. Well, that'd be great. Okay. And so, but that's, that's the method we'll start to start to use. Okay. So let's, let's just do a little something here. Sure. Um, rather than get into all the details of this event, mm -hmm. let's, let's tiptoe around it to begin with. Sure. It would be easily more easy to do emotionally speaking. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so this event if it was a movie, just give me a, a movie title for it. Seal bashing. Mm. Seal bashing. Mm -hmm. See, it's even hard to say? Yeah. Okay. All right. But that's the title of the event. We're not getting into details now. We're, that's the title of the event. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Great. And so in that, you have a lot of, well, first of all, how long did this movie last? Like the the one that I watched, it was a. Well, I'm, I I speak about the emotional event for you, the seal uh, bashing event. I push it down. Um, I don't really. I, there are very few people that know about it because I don't talk about it because it's extremely painful. Because I was watching by myself and I was nine years old, and the phone rang. My mother was supposed to watch it with me, and she didn't, and I was by myself. Wait, wait. I'm going to stop you a second. Yeah. Let me refine my question a bit. Yes. Now you're watching some documentary, so that would take time to, it has a beginning and an end, there's stuff in the middle, and it takes time. What we're looking for isn't that whole event. Right. We're, we're looking for crescendo moments. You see something, and little Andre goes, oh, you, know, you have whatever your emotional response is. Okay. I know exactly what it was. Yes. Oh, okay. Good. That's what we're going to want because it's that crescendo event usually lasts a second or two or five or something like that. It was very short, but I okay. remember it vividly. All right. I can All see right. it right now. All right. Well, okay. Mm -hmm. We'll get to, we'll get to that, but it's it's that crescendo moment which I gather we can still call seal bashing. Oh yes. Okay. All right. Well, so, we could call it seal skinning as well. Well, okay. We will be more specific then. Seal skinning. Okay. All right. So there's this event. Mm -hmm. right? We've got a little movie. It's a little one, two, five second whoop, crescendo emotion movie. All right. Now, as best you can, and again, I don't want you to drag yourself through this at all. Okay. No need to do this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just estimate for me. As you... As you recall it now, what is your emotion about it? Are you f afraid? Are you guilty? Are you angry? Are you what? Uh, it was just appalling. It was shocking that I could be related to people that would do this for a living. Um, and it was just so brutal. And it was like actually watching. When, when you watch a horror film that is a Hollywood horror film, you know it's fake. But this was real. Okay. What I'm getting to, though, Andre, for our purposes, is going to be a label, as best you can, for the emotion. And what I've got now is shock. 
it was shocking. Um, it no, was, wait, 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 wait. Your words were, it was shocking. Got it. Right. What I'm interested in now, because we can't change what it was. Mm -hmm. Your emotional response now is what we can shift. Is it still, and it could well be, shocking? Or are you angry about it? Or would you give it some other emotion? Uh, it just makes me, it made me, it made me, made me very, very sad. And it still does. Okay. All right. I, I want to bring an unseen therapist. Okay. Sure. And let me let me ask you first: Have you uh, have you done? Have you worked with the unseen therapist? Done any sessions on your own or with anybody else previously? I can't make her go to work for me. <laughs> well, okay. I'm going to digress for a moment. Okay. How is it you know you can't get her to work for you? Well, because I read the book. <laughs> I even okay. Bound. <laughs> okay, good. All right. But that didn't answer my question. Okay. <laughs> what did you do that it, then you said it didn't work for me? I mean, be more specific for me if you can. Well, I, I, I wasn't quite sure how to do it. And when I was learning it, um, I was already cognitively impaired due to my liver failure. So I couldn't understand what it was. And I've gone back to it. And I still don't get it. I don't get what I'm supposed to be doing because it's kind of like praying and I do that anyway. Okay. All right. Well, okay. Good feedback. Let me cover that a bit just before we bring in unseen therapist. Okay. okay. Sure. What many people do somehow, and it's erroneous from my point of view, but I think it's just sort of a conditioning almost everybody has. Mm -hmm. And that is we're going to, be doing a therapy session with God, okay? Or the unseen therapist or this massive major spiritual ex dimension and we better do it right, you know? I mean, we better bring in the harps and the angels and the, right. and the warm feelings and all of that or it's just simply not going to work. How am I doing? Pretty good. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but that's, that's, that's an error. Right. Many people, I don't, I even talk about it in my book. I say, don't, don't, don't try for a Hollywood moment. I say that in the book. Okay. Right. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm impatient. I, I want it all and I want it now. And I, and, uh, and that hinders me a lot. Okay. All right. Now, okay. let's back up another second. Okay. Okay. Let's say you have a headache right? and you think to yourself, oh, I got I get my headaches an eight and I want it to go away. So, oh, I'll take an aspirin because right. you've learned that aspirin might help your headache. So you swallow the aspirin. And let me ask you, how, how would you know if that aspirin worked or not? Well, I know it would take 20 minutes to metabolize. So if my headache was gone in 20 minutes, I know it worked. Well, if it went from an eight, even if it went to a two, it still worked, didn't right. it? I mean, it did something. Okay. Right. But there's also something to be said for the placebo effect because it starts working sooner. Like if I take an Ativan when I'm anxious, it's supposed to take 20 minutes, but I know that I've taken it. So I know that the, the calm is coming. So that calms me because I know it's on the way. All right. So, so whether it's aspirin or Ativan, right. in either case, when you take it, you simply swallow it, but you don't expect Hollywood moments. Of course not. You don't expect angels and harps and orchestras and trumpets and all this stuff. You just, you swallow the pill, you wait a little while, you check out your headache or your anxiety. Oh, it's better. That's how you know it worked. Well, yeah, but I mean, it, 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 it is a placebo effect because you're, when I take the Ativan, the anxiety, I'm like, oh, okay, I took it. Okay, so I'm fine. I'm going to be fine very shortly so I can okay. relax and wait right. for it to really work. But so right. I'll, my anxiety will go from a, a nine to a four, waiting until it's a two or one when the okay. other works. All right. So what you're telling me is your your emotional expectations have something to do with it. That's a placebo, okay? Of course. Yes. All right. Which means your mental set has a lot to do with your health. Oh, I yes, absolutely. Okay. I think, okay. I, I think that's true with everyone. Yeah, well, that's where we're going. We're going to be using all of that here. But but anyway. I feel so sick and I hate myself. Well, what do you think is going to happen? 
Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, okay, but but let me let me get to something for a moment. So in the case of the Ativan, the aspirin or whatever, you swallow the pill, but you don't expect Hollywood moments for no. it to work. You simply swallow it, you wait, you get a result. That's how you know it works. The right. same thing occurs with the unseen therapist. It is no different. Okay. You don't have to have warm fuzzies and all kinds of other stuff going on. It does not. I Listen, I teach this, Andre. I developed it. And I don't get all that stuff every time I do it. Right. No. Once in a while, people do get something like that. They go, wow, wow. But it's not necessary for results. I've seen it with EFT and other people. And like, how did you do that? How, what is, what is this, this trick you're doing? How, how is this magic working? Yeah. Okay. But there was no warm fuzzies along the way. No. Okay. Same here. Okay. Same here. Okay. So... With that in mind, when we do this, I'm hoping for a little different perspective on whether or not Unseen Therapist did her job or whether or not you were able to use her. Right. Okay. All right. That's just background. Okay. okay. So you and I now are going to enter into a, a um, Unseen Therapist session based on this seal skinning movie. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to assume, without putting you through it to begin with, that your initial response to this on a zero to ten scale is a ten because you were near tears just walking in the door. Yeah. So that would be a reasonable probably a, a nine because I didn't become hysterical. So <laughs> well, okay, we'll call it a nine. Whatever. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. So <clears throat> I'm gonna narrate the whole thing for you. It's going to be easy, easy peasy, okay? Um, all you need to do is just follow along. You don't, you do not have to do it perfectly. Okay. Um, there are no grades for it. We're going to go through it. And then I'm going to ask you, well, how's things going? And we're going to discuss that. Okay. Okay. Because all this is part of getting you started on this and having a good feel and sense for what's going on. Okay. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, just go ahead, uh, sit back, you know, close your eye, close your eyes and, and uh, take a, take a nice, deep, relaxing breath. Go ahead. And uh, now just as a way of inviting unseen therapists, and again, we don't need trumpets and bells and whistles and all of that. Mm -hmm. Just recall some loving moment in your life, something as simple as a dog looking you in the face or anything else, a very simple loving moment. And whenever you're there, just nod your head. So I know. Yeah. All right, good. And just as a minor digression with your eyes still closed, all we're doing with this recalling the loving moment is doing your best to align yourself with the pure love of the unseen therapist. Neither you nor I are there at this point. She knows that. So what we're doing is we're saying, ah, look, unseen therapist, you're pure love. You know, I got a bunch of ego chatter and other things going on, but I'm going to get my effort here at doing my best for aligning with love. Okay. So I got a little moment. Here you go. All that is really saying to her is, okay, we're going to hand you something now. And we are listening. <laughs> we need to get the idea that she's always trying to guide we're not very good listeners, okay? but for the moment, we're going to give her front and center stage and let's see what happens. All right. So with that in mind, we're going to shift your focus now back to age nine. And there's no need for us to, at this point, for us to drag ourselves through all the horrific stuff that may be in this documentary we're seeing, but there is this five minutes excuse me, one to five second crescendo moment with this seal skinning going on that gives you this very sad emotion when you think about it. So, oh, my phone just rang. Just keep your eyes closed. Hold on a second. Mm -hmm. Carol. Sorry for that. I'm going to cut the phone off just a minute. All right. So we're going to represent 
this very sad emotion that you have about it now. How could I be involved and my family be involved or whatever was going on, this big sad thing. And we're going to represent it metaphorically. It's a, just a metaphorically imaginary thing as an unwanted vibration around your heart. Now, we're not asking for your, your actually make your heart vibrate. Right. It's, it's all very imaginary, okay? Just a representation, a metaphor. So the heart goes, ta 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 That's an unwanted vibration. Unseen therapist sees that representation. She understands that you're only nine years old. She understands a lot of things about it that you didn't know then, maybe don't even know now. Okay. She also understands that you need not keep carrying that around clear up into your current adulthood because it is costing you. Yes, it may be sad. Yes, lots of things. But to get into tears about it so many decades later is over the top and it is costing you. She knows that. You likely know that yourself anyway as an adult. All right. She sees it. She knows you need relief from that. Not that she's going to change what happened. But we want to change your emotional response to it. Make it easier. Kick At least try to kick the center out of the emotional, the unnecessary, unwanted emotional response. So that unwanted emotional response is the unwanted vibration around your heart, the ta-ta-ta-ta-ta. So imagine now, unseen therapist, with her love, with her ultimate caring and understanding of all of this. And again, we're not excusing the behavior at all. We're understanding. People do things for reasons that we don't really understand. But we have to let things be. And so she sends a gentle, in your imagination, a gentle, loving caring, understanding breeze, healing breeze from her towards you. It enters your heart or surrounds your heart in the unwanted vibration. And with that ultimate pure love, that sadness, that excess sadness doesn't really need to be and cannot survive. It doesn't mean we wouldn't have concern about it. But it means the excess, the over-the-top part doesn't need to keep weighing you down and burdening you. So in your imagination, it surrounds the unwanted vibration in your heart. And the ta-ta ta -ta goes to ta-ta 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 ta-ta. Now, that's, we're going to repeat that, Andre. Unwanted vibration around your heart is this sadness, this emotional response to even remembering this seal skinning event. Here comes the breeze. Ta 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 And now, Andre, with your eyes still closed. Take your time and repeat that. Unwanted vibration around your heart, the sadness about the seal skinning, the breeze, ta 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 Do that a time or two or three or whatever you want until you've gone as far as you think you can go, however far that may be. And again, no grades here. Whatever happens, happens. Take your time. You've got lots of time. Whenever you're done, open your eyes and we'll, we'll talk. Okay. How do I know? Well, um, all I wanted you to do at this point is not tell me whether you know or not. Just let me know you're done. So I gather you're done, right? I think I'm done, yes. Okay. Okay. Let me ask you this. As you were doing it, 
and I was walking you through it. Did you have any problems with it? A lot of competing thoughts, for example, or something else? Uh, no, not really. I was, I was hearing you. Um, okay. There's always things that are like, I got a text while, 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 while I was doing it and I could hear the ding and I thought, I wonder who that is and what is it about? But then I focused myself back. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So, um, close your eyes and now rerun that movie, the seal skinning crescendo moment. And tell me if you're still a nine. No. Well, no. estimate a number for me. Mm, it's pretty devastating. Uh, maybe a five, maybe. Okay. I was... I think initially I was taught by you to err on the high side. Well, all right. So it could be a four, but four and a half, maybe five. All right. Now, maybe less now. Okay. Well, I, I have time. Okay. <laughs> what? I think I can tell you what happened and I can keep myself. I mean, I'm not. I. I well, that, that would be a good test, but because before you were in tears before you even started. Yeah. Okay. But I can tell you about it. It was, it was. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Sure. I'd, li I'd like to have you tell me about it, but I'd like to have you tell me about it with certain instructions. This is something like we call tell the story technique. It's just a technical thing in our advanced course and all that, but tell the story to me. But the moment you get any intensity, you want to stop right there because that says, uh oh, we've got something here that's not done yet. That's important to know. Okay. And we're going to want to stop and deal with that little piece. That's how one way you can be thorough with this. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I think what you're telling me, and don't let me put words in your mouth, Andre. Okay. No. I think what you're telling me is it appears that what we just did with Unseen Therapist may have kicked the center out of it well enough so you're seemingly comfortable enough to start telling me. Yeah, I think I am. I'm afraid to because what if it didn't work is what the problem no. I'm having is. All right, well, let me, let me help you with that fear. Okay. As you go through it and you start to get intense, we're going to stop. Okay. And you're going to tell me about it, okay? So <laughs> all you have to really be afraid of is, well... Do I get intent? But see, you don't even know that. You're, you're, if I hear it right, you are what we call, you, you have what we call the fear of the fear. You know what it used to be like. Yes. <laughs> and you won't know if you're beyond it until you actually wade into the waters. Of right? course. Yes. All right. Well, I've always, more than anything, I've had phobophobia. I've been afraid of being afraid. So it causes it to be worse. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is a start. This is what we call a good start, we hope. So anyway, okay. start telling the story. But remember, remember, the moment you get any kind of intensity, you stop right there. We don't want you to be brave and gut through it. Okay. That's not, you know, that's going right by an opportunity. Each okay. one of these things that might appear as intense are opportunities. Okay. And we don't want to walk by them. Okay. All right. So go ahead. All right. Well, what happens in a seal hunt? I, I'm sure that you're aware of it. They, they jump off the ships and or the boats and onto the ice floes, and they, whoa, and they um, they they attack seals and kill them. And there was this 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 one instance where where they there was a baby, a adorable white baby seal, and. This is incredible because I've never been able to get this far. Um, and they, okay, no, nope. that's enough. All right, okay. So what number? What, what number did you get? Did you just get I'm to seven now? A seven. Could yeah. you feel in your body someplace like a heart pounding or something? I can feel it. I can, it's a tight. I'm, I'm tight in my chest and want to cry. So. Okay. okay. But I can pull. And you don't want me to push. No, I don't want you to push. No, okay. no. We're going to spend a little time on that piece. Okay. All right. We're going to see if we can get beyond that piece. Now, so you, this young baby seal was being abused in some fashion. Okay. Yes. 
All right. What's important about this is, is your emotion about, is that still a sad emotion or is there, does that remind you of something? Does that, re, does that relate to you in some fashion? We want to get a little more specific with what your emotion is on this instance. It's sad. And I guess I'm a bit angry. I'm, I think I'm angry with my mother for not being maternal enough to wa- make me watch this horror by myself. Okay. All right. Um, she should have ignored the phone and watched it with me because it was, it affected me for the rest of my friggin' life. Okay. All right. Now let me back up here a second before we do unseen therapist on this again. All right. Mm-hmm. In the more advanced part of our high-end training. We talk about reframes and things like this. And so mm-hmm. one of the things I'm thinking, just based on what you said, is that because we have some anger at mother because she didn't monitor all this or wasn't sitting with you or in right. being what a mother should be, okay, right. at, at that point, okay. That happened a lot. Okay, well, all right. That's another clue. That happened a lot. Now, behind that, am I hearing mother's not always paying attention to Andre? No. Yes, that is true. Am I also hearing, this is important, Andre, am I also hearing because mother and maybe father and maybe others aren't paying attention to me, there's something wrong with me, I'm not lovable, I don't count, I'm not good enough. How are, how do those, you're not in your head? Quite accurate. Because I, I was, I was always alone when I was a child because my next oldest sibling was four years older and then they were four, five and six or five, six and seven uh, when I was three. So I no longer than that. Um, But they, the next, they were the gang of three and I was the odd man out because I was four years younger than the least youngest. Okay. Now, I think we have a bullseye on something here, but I want to tell you, but you have to tell me whether sure. my suspicions are correct. All right. There's young Andre neglected in a sense, not paid attention to odd man out the way you describe it. And you build in quite naturally. You have no choice actually as a youngster because you can't really defend yourself and debate points or anything else. You're just too young. You don't have the resources for it. But there's you developing. I'm not good enough. I don't count. I'm not lovable to something, all that stuff. Something's wrong with me. That to me is a very, very strong candidate. If it's not resolved for anxiety in current time. Okay. Well, I still have that. Um, I still have, you know, I'm not good enough. And that, well, I know, I know because it's not resolved. That's right. the point. Right. That's, 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 that's the point. We carry around within our belief systems and we bury it a lot, but subconsciously and whatever, there's something wrong with us and there's other things that I said. And that creates conflict within because you don't want to feel that way. Nobody does. And in right. fact, there is nothing wrong with you in the more spiritual sense. And logically, you probably recognize that. Would I be right? Yes. So there's a conflict. You have an emotional foundation, I'll call it, on the one hand, and a logical, it's not really true. On the other hand, that's a conflict, anxiety. Yeah, I know there's certain truths about myself that that are are real because I can say them, but uh, I don't know if I really believe them. I I know that I'm... um, I'm relatively intelligent and I'm funny and I, I get along well with people and I, I'm easy with friends and easy with entertaining and easy, I mean, easy with the anecdote, but it's not enough. It's, it's yeah. because people will still leave me. Yeah. And it won't be enough. My view, Andre, until you go back in time and resolve these emotional issues that aren't resolved. And it isn't just about the seal skinning. See, seal skinning is age nine. I'm, I usually look for something further back still. And it doesn't surprise me at all that we're an age nine thing that bothers you. Yes, yes, yes. Got it. Okay. 
But what gets to you is your mother wasn't paying attention to you. She wasn't being a mother. Da, 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 da. You were left alone to watch this horrific thing, etc. I'm hearing a more foundational issue is I'm not loved. I'm not paid attention to. I'm nobody, at least from a belief point of view, from a very young age. Right. I don't want to put words in your mouth. No, you're 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 quite right. I'm, I I was I was left behind an awful lot when I was a child and and ten and, and was meant to understand that I should do these things on do things on my own. I was a I was a, I was, I was, I was a happy child I thought, and but I was independent. And then all of a sudden, when I was fifteen, I just could the independent left independence left me. Yeah. Okay. But I was an independent child. Well, you can only do these things just so long and after they catch up with you and right. you manifest all kinds of things. In your case, panic disorders, anxiety, too much alcohol, mm -hmm. liver transplant, and on goes the story. Okay. But I did it. I, I made it through. I mean, it's been well, hard, but I mean, well, well, you yeah, well, know how strong we are until strong is our only option. Well, yeah, but you're still carrying around that which caused the problem to begin with. Right. And that is the unresolved stuff about you. Now, you've already told me that you were an affable kid, you know, well-liked, you know, uh, you know, quick-witted and funny and, you know, pleasant and, yeah, right? Well, that's pretty much it, yes. Okay. Um, but now you're, you're housebound. You can't even go out and find friends. No. Um, well, a lot of people have become strange since the transplant because they're not quite sure what to do yeah. with me. Okay. That's, that's another entirely different. And we moved since we moved right. to the suburbs, which I don't like. Um, but it's a good place to recover, not a good place to live. Okay. Um, and so I, 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 I am pretty much housebound because we live way out of the city. Okay. Well, I, I don't want to get too far off the track. I'm going to get back on the track. That's what I'm doing, yes. Of where, we're, where we were going. Um, so what we're talking about now is forms of what we call in our advanced course, or high-end course, reframes. So I, I, I want to be talking about your mother for the moment and your father or anybody else who may have, let's say, ignored you, right. did not do their parental duties or whatever as time went on. Mm -hmm. We're not going to excuse the behavior. We're mm -hmm. not going to excuse it. Okay. Okay. We are going to effort towards understanding it. And that's a reasonable step towards forgiving it, meaning letting it go. So it no, no longer has to bother you. That'd be wonderful. Okay. All right. So long as you're carrying around, however submerged and repressed, there's something wrong with me. I'm not good enough. I'm not lovable and so on. So long as you carry that around, it's going to affect everything. As you know, as you know, Andre, I'm not a, a doctor, no. but I'm, I'm going to give you a, an engineer's version of medicine that no doctor yet that I found disagrees with. Okay. <laughs> and that's this, when you're having negative thoughts, like I'm not lovable and I don't count and that kind of thing, even though they're subconscious and you're not consciously aware of it, it is creating a literal cascade of negative chemistry in your body. Right. The adrenaline goes out of balance. The cortisol goes out of balance. Hundreds of chemical reactions, repair mechanisms and all that go out of balance. And your immune system now has to go do something with all that. Okay. Right. If, it, if it doesn't, you're in big trouble. So it does it. Hooray. Right. But there's only so much to it and it can only do it for so long <laughs> before other things start to manifest right like anxiety panic disorders and other stuff we're talking about mm -hmm. all right so um with that that's also a, a reframe because all all that goes to the point that none of that none of that or correct me if i'm wrong okay i see it as none of that is your fault you're very young you're neglected you know you're made to be independent Nobody cares what you think. <laughs> they leave you alone with a horrific movie or documentary or whatever, as one example. 
and so on. And you have no choice but to believe that. But that's not really your fault. Did I say it right? Uh, yes. Right. Yes. I, I didn't ask for any of it. And it, it just happened to me. Yeah. Um, I would suggest to you that were I in your shoes at that point, and I was neglected and have all the experiences you had, you know, I'm going to have problems too. Right. Yes? Mm -hmm. Any child under those circumstances is a candidate for all these problems. Okay. I, I, I don't want to no. impose, impose thoughts now. Okay. No, no, it's true. I believe I, I agree with all you. Right. All right. These are all reframes. So it gets to the point where, okay, if my mother is not, monitoring or helping or watch or being a mother while I'm watching this seal skinning movie. Mm -hmm. um, that's really her issue more than yours. Yes. Except I bore the brunt of it. Except what? I bore the brunt of it. Well, yeah, you bought it. Yes. Okay. Now let's talk about mother for the moment. I don't know your mother. Okay. No. Um, you're telling me previously that she was like nervous and you know, this, 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 this kind of thing. Yes. I don't know what's in her mind. Um, but let me just for the moment speculate on some things and you tell me if they're on target or not, or if not how they would be on target or whatever. Okay. So here I'm your mother. Okay. I've got several children. I'm nervous to begin with. I've got a lot of things going on in my life. My my husband has died and I'm very nervous about my own circumstances. Okay. I'm angry, etc. I've got a lot of personal stuff that I have to deal with. I have other children to deal with other responsibilities and so on. All right. Um, and so, while well, Andre, my youngest child is watching this movie. I am unaware. I, maybe I should be aware of what's going on, but I got so many other things that are taking my time. He just needs to see it. And I don't really understand what he's going through. If I did, maybe I'd behave differently. Now I'm guessing that about your mom. I think that's pretty accurate. I don't think you did it to me on purpose. Well, I would doubt it too. I mean, you know, well, I know I mean, she <laughs> I mean you're you're an adult. You don't always know what else, anybody else is thinking or feeling because of whatever you said or did or didn't say or didn't do, and of course, all of that. I I got to do the same thing. I'm you know I'm I'm forever in front of the public and I say things and there's no there's no way that I'm going to say something that fits with everybody I talk to. <laughs> yes, well, I agree, and it's getting to the point now you can't say anything to anyone about anything. <laughs> Well, all right, different topic, perhaps. Yeah. But anyway, anyway, I want to get to that point, and, and and about your mother. Would it also be similar about your father? Your father was young, uh, died early. Yeah. About other people in your family, your brother, for example, he's looking out after his own interest and not understanding really what he's doing to you. He was maybe maybe he should, but is so involved with his own. Oh, he was, he was exceptionally, exceptionally selfish. Um, and he only thought of his end game and no okay. one else. And right. he didn't care who he had to use or steal from or he stole money from me. And I was a child. Okay. All right. And yes. And I can hear the disgust and the anger just in that. I got it. Got it. Okay. <laughs> Deserved. Yes. Yes. Her for our purposes, again, we're not excusing your brother's behavior, not at all. No. In one sense, it's inexcusable, okay? But if you're going to get relief from this, you need to have freedom from it and understand it, move towards letting it go, because you're not going to change it. Oh, no. Okay. But you can let it go. All right. right. Now. I want to do another un with this all this reframe stuff in mind. I'm going to do another unseen therapist thing with you. It won't be at a specific event. It'll be more at the take the edge off type 
general type stuff with what we've been talking about. Okay. Okay. And we'll see what happens. So go okay. ahead, close the eyes and take the nice deep breath. And we don't have to invite unseen therapist again. She's already here. Okay. Okay. So I'm just going to start rambling a little bit. I don't know where I'm going to go and we'll just go someplace and aim at giving you some relief, some beginner's relief at least on these, I'm not good enough. I don't count. Something's wrong with me. I'm not lovable type beliefs that little you would carry around. So let's go back in time, even before you can remember. In fact, we'll even go back to the womb. Your mother is very nervous just about having you. She wants you, but she's nervous about that. And one thing we know from our medical scientists is that the child, the embryo, the fetus, picks up where mother's coming from. And so we end up getting a, all of us, getting a blend during those very formative stages, a blend of inputs from loving thoughts to anxious and insecure thoughts to angry thoughts. We, get a, we all get a blend of it. And nobody gets a blend of 100% loving thoughts because I don't know a single person in this world, mothers or otherwise, who are 24-7 always loving. It doesn't happen. Right. So we, we get our blend. We get our blend. And to the extent there's nervousness in there, you start to get that blend as well. All right. Unseen therapist understands that. And to the extent that that is bothersome to you, and you, we told you before, maybe it wasn't bothersome, but we're going to be more thorough here just in case. We're going to imagine you as that fetus or embryo not with a vibration around your heart, but just with a vibration around you, da 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 da, that is, that is keeping you from perfect peace. Unseen therapist sees that. And again, here comes this nice, beautiful, cooling breeze. She knows you have nothing to do with whatever's mother's thinking or doing or whatever. And you're responding to it and don't really know what you're responding to. So she brings in this beautiful healing presence, this breeze, this nice love that surrounds you. It's warm where it needs to be and cool where it needs to be. And it just surrounds you and brings peace. And just spend well, maybe 15 seconds or so in the quiet of that, imagining peace letting your mother have her own stuff, but you, despite all that, having peace. Do your best to imagine that for 15 seconds or so. And then with your eyes still closed, you're now shift forward in time. There you are, a young baby. You're a child. You're beginning to walk, talk. And you're still getting inputs, perhaps, from your brother, perhaps from your mother. You don't remember them. But they are inputs. Maybe they are inputs that you're being neglected. You, as a young child, every young child wants to be loved. And they want the authority figures in their world to love them and love them on their own terms, your own terms. Not happening here. Not happening. People are busy with their own lives. Your brother's very selfish. Your mother has her own anxiety. She may not understand what your needs are. She has other children as well. Eventually, she's not. She's very unhappy because she's lost her husband. Her main source of love, peace, shifts things away from others, including you. So unseen therapist sees that in you. She understands that. She understands young you is picking all this up. And so metaphorically, we start 
thinking about all these ideas as little clouds that now float in front of young you. One little cloud is a label that says, I'm not good enough. Another cloud says, I'm not lovable. Another small cloud says, I don't count. Another one says, I'm not, I'm, something's wrong with me. I don't fit. These little clouds are just floating around out there. They're outside you. They are fictions because you know later on in life, as you look back, that there's nothing really wrong with you on those levels. But the way you are given them at early ages, uh, you pick these things up. So Unseen Therapist is now there at your early ages, seeing these clouds as they float around in front of you. And she again sends this nice, beautiful, healing, loving breeze that comes towards the clouds. And the cloud that says, I'm not good enough, here comes the breeze. And the cloud hesitates for a moment. But then, because you really are good enough, just the young you just somehow bought that you weren't, that cloud starts to float away. I'm not good enough, floats away off into the cosmos. And then the one that says, I don't count, here comes the breeze. Well, you do count. You didn't think so then. It causes some anxiety. But you do count. And that cloud floats off again, off into the cosmos. And then the one that says, there's something wrong with me. Here comes the breeze, and you look at that a moment. Is, is there really some? Well, maybe physically I've got some problems, and maybe da da da. But is there anything more wrong with me other than what I've manifested? Is there anything more wrong with me at the essence of me than anybody else? Mm, not really. Something's wrong with me. The cloud starts to move with the breeze off into the cosmos. And finally, we have the I'm not lovable. And here, Unseen Therapist wants to stop for a moment. He says, you know, one of the things, Andre, that all human beings tend to do, you included, Gary included, everybody included, is we try to look for love outside of yourself. My parents need to love me. My siblings need to love me. My friends need to love me. I need to be loved. We're looking for love outside of ourselves. We want compliments. We want strokes. We want sex. We want all kinds of things that tell us, ah, we are loved. But we're, you're looking for love, says Unseen Therapist, outside yourself. And if you'll think about it, this is what everybody else is doing as well. It's one reason your brother may be so selfish because he keeps looking for love outside himself and he's not getting it on his terms. And so he acts in selfish ways to try to get it, try to get it, try to get it in these unacceptable, inexcusable ways. And again, we're not excusing the behavior. We're trying to understand it, get freedom from it. So everybody is looking for love outside themselves. But let me tell you, says Unseen Therapist, I've been right here all along. Call me God if you want to. Jesus. Unseen Therapist. Higher power or just simply love. That is what I am. And by the way, just in case you're not aware of it, Andre, I don't exist floating around someplace in the cosmos outside of yourself. I'm within you. You're just not paying attention. And neither is anybody else. So let's spend a little time now on your own. And in this little time on your own, imagine the unseen therapist being, as best you can, being within you being part of you and then walk around in your world and spend a little time in front of your mother, your brother, and others 
And this documentary, by the way, and the people in it and so on, in a way where we are understand, not forget, not excusing behaviors, but we're understanding them and get the sense that you are loved. You are loved. You don't have to get love from all these people. You have to understand them. And the more you can do that, the more you can, again, not excuse a behavior, but be lighter and more free. So spend time with love inside you, going around the number of people. And whenever you're done, just open your eyes and we'll talk. Okay. Again, were you able to follow around okay? Follow along? Mm hmm I think so. All right. I'm going to do a little testing. What we just did was foundational. I don't know if that foundation assisted with the seal skinning movie. But I'd like to have you go back and tell me that seal skinning movie now. And see where you are on that. Get to the point where you have this young white seal. Tell me about that. It was horrible. Um, the, 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 um, the hunter bashed the seal with uh, a bat. And it didn't become unconscious. And it was skinned alive. And the mother was... Oh, dear. No, uh, the mother was there trying to clean her baby, to 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 to, to comfort it, to bring to make it be alive, and it was dying on the ice. There was blood everywhere, and I've never ever gotten this far. Well, I got that you're not getting this far, but I do hear I do hear some level of intensity. If it was a nine, or maybe down to a four or five before. What is it? Is it still four or five? No, it's about a three, actually, maybe even a two, which is quite remarkable because I've never, I mean, I can see it. I can see it happening, but it's, and it's disturbing because of just, just the very essence of what it is. Yeah. But Let it's me, painful. It's, 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 it's just uncomfortable. Well, got it. Now, let me, let me draw a little parallel and then you I'm going to give you something to compare this to for the moment. Okay. You tell me where you are on it. I can remember seeing a movie. This was many, many years ago. It had all, it had a lot to do with um, the inhumanity that um, our culture gives to animals like cows and sheep and chickens and stuff. They're murdered so that we can have meat and all of this. Okay. But what we don't see, what we see is the, you know, the meat sitting on the meat counter. We don't see what, actually went into it, and I can recall very clearly there were these little pigs. There was a mother pig in a cage, and her younger children, young pigs, in other cages, but they were all caged from each other. And I remember as clear as I can, and I still get a little twinge of, oh, the mother pig trying to reach through with her foot or her arm towards trying to reach and touch one of her children. Gives me a little tug, you know, with that. But that's how these animals were treated and are treated to this day. Okay. Now, you had a reaction to that. Well, it's the same thing. I mean, the mother was trying to reach out to her child. Yes. Her, and, and she couldn't get to him. And just like the mother seal just was, couldn't bring her, her infant back to life. Okay. Now, but I, I know that's an uncomfortable story. It got was still it. alive on the ice, but no skin on it. it yeah. I got that's that's the worst. That's the worst picture. I got that. Okay. Now, the reason I brought that up to you is because while I don't like that vision, I wish I hadn't seen that movie, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and I still have some emotional tug on it. Mm -hmm. um, 
I have what I consider to be a normal emotional tug. Got it. This kind of thing shouldn't happen. Uh, and so on. When I see, when I'm watching like Dateline or 60 Minutes and, uh, and I do a story like that, I just won't watch it. Yeah. Okay. So what I want to know, what I want to know is your a version aversion to watching this is it normal do you consider it is it over the top you tell me i think that it's me just choosing maybe it's some willful blindness because i do eat meat um but it may also just be because why do i want to you know upset myself with something that i i know that it goes on and i know it does but i don't need to see it happening yeah Okay. That makes sense. Well, yeah. Um, one thing I didn't do, this is a mistake on my part, Andre, is when we did this last unseen therapist session, having to do with your mother and you and you buying all these things and All of this, I didn't get a sense to begin with of a zero to 10 before. So we can't really compare a zero to 10 after because it was too, too right. general. It wasn't, spe wasn't a specific event. Mm -hmm. Do this for me. Sure. Go back as far as you can in your own life. And remember, remember some event with your mother or anyone else where you felt neglected. I'm on my own. Nobody's here for me. I was about three and my father was gone six months and we were back in Canada. And cause we had, we had been in the UK. we have been living in the UK on exchange, with the air force. And uh, I was sitting on the front step having toast in the morning and there was a plane uh, flying and I said to my mother we have to go to the airport because daddy won't know where to find us wow uh, hmm. I haven't thought about that in many years well that's a 10 yeah okay how are you doing how are you doing energy wise right now are you ready for more or do you want to stop no I'm ready Okay. Um, so I don't hear the whole story that you're seeing the toast and you, you said what to your mother? I said, I saw a plane and I pointed to it and I said, that's daddy. He's coming back and we have to go to the airport and because he won't know where to find us. And, and, and said what? And because he won't know where to find us. So we have to go. Okay. And, get him. okay. and I don't remember what her reaction was. I think she just probably went back into the house. Okay. Well, she, my, I, I'm going to guess she didn't think that airplane was your father coming home. She never really believed that he died. She oh, never, okay. This was, this was after he died. This is after he died, yes. Okay. And he, it was six months after he died. I was about three and a half. Perhaps I was four. Um, but she was never entirely sure because they never his body was never recovered. Uh, that, And he was detecting Soviet submarines when he was killed. And he was, she was never entirely sure that he wasn't captured okay so we don't know what your mother was thinking but i could certainly speculate there that this hurt her she didn't want to get emotional in front of you yes she didn't want to sit there and get into it with you uh she wanted to try to avoid it you're too young to understand anyway again i'm not excusing the behavior no i'm trying to understand the behavior but would i be on point Yes, um, I, I don't think I, I don't know if you're if you're, when you're three you can grasp death. I just knew yeah. that he wasn't coming home, and yeah. I, I wanted him to come home. And that's your emotional response, but your emotional response also is my mother's not listening to me. Right. All right. In that in that episode, which is the stronger emotion? My daddy's not really coming home, or I miss my daddy, or mother's not listening to me 
Oh, I think it was that I missed my dad. I think that's what it was. That right. I, I want. I didn't. I wanted him. I wanted to find him to tell him how he could come back to us. All right. Okay. Here's what I'd like to do, Andre, at, at this moment. Sure. I would like to close this up. Okay. And I'm going to send you this recording. Mm -hmm. And you can go back and look at the recording. There's a lot of reframes and useful stuff, but I would particularly urge you to go through these unseen therapist sessions again. Okay. A time or two, because they will have a way of hopefully collapsing more and more. Right. right. I want a little time to go by between now and the next time we get together. Okay. So I'm going to send the recording. And then after you've seen them a couple of times and you think you are ready, you let me know. We'll get on here and we'll keep going. Oh, I, that'd be great. I'd really Does, appreciate that. Yes. Is that. That fits, okay? Well, this, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling very positive because I think like I'm, things are, these are things that I haven't been able to talk about in, in years and things that I, I think that I forgot. Well, you can still talk about them. Right. But there's still, I call it excess emotion. There's, right. ex, there's excess. I mean, like, like I still get this twinge about the pig, you know, um, and I consider that normal. That is normal. Of yeah, course. I consider, I consider that normal. But there's, to the extent that what you're experiencing physically, anxiety-wise, emotionally, uh, heat uricaria and et cetera, um, those to me are reactions to re emotional responses that are in excess of what they should be. Right. Oh, of course. Yes. Okay. So we want to dumb those down. We want to bring those down. And I don't mean to put them under the, under the carpet. I mean to literally resolve them. That would so, be so they become just something else that happened in your past. Unfortunate but something that happened. Right. Because we all have unfortunate things that happened. <laughs> yes, we have. Okay. All right. So I'm going to send this to you. I'm going to send this to you. And then, and then you get back to me as soon as you think you're ready and we'll, we'll proceed. How will I know when I'm ready? I mean, I, I'm ready tomorrow if you want me to be. Spend at least two days with these things. Sure. Okay? All right. And then, and then after that, get back to me. And we'll, 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 we'll make a time. Sounds fantastic. Okay. Well, thank you very much for this time. I really appreciate it. All right. All right. See you later. Thanks very much, Gary. Bye. Bye-bye.